tonight on 16 by 9. A camera recording inside your eye? Well, a Canadian is about to make history as the first Ionic Man. This is like an incredibly innovative thing to do as, as a documentary filmmaker. There's no doubt Slumdog Millionaire is the toast of the Hollywood set. But here in Mumbai, India, we take you to Dravi, Asia's biggest slum, where real life doesn't come with a Hollywood ending. I'm a slum dweller, I'm not a slum dog. Transit riders across Canada are getting exposed to an anti-God campaign. Tonight, 16 by 9 investigates whether the godlessness has gone too far. We're not trying to convince anybody to abandon their, their worldview. That's all coming up on 16 by 9. Please don't touch the camera, yeah. that's assault. Talk to us about this. I don't need to talk to you. Can you have me? Oh, I'm sorry. Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. I'm Mary Garofalo. Imagine a camera built right into your eye, recording everything it sees. No, it's not fiction, it's fact. Tonight, an exclusive story about a Canadian filmmaker who's literally about to make himself into the world's first human camera. Bob Spence, documentary filmmaker. A man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first bionic man. Rob Spence will be that man. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. It is no longer just a sci-fi fantasy dramatized in a TV series. What will it look like when it's in place? Just like the other eye. Rob Spence does exist, and Rob Spence is hoping to make history. What I'm going to do is take this fake eye and uh, put a camera in it. I guess the most obvious question here mm. is, why are you doing this? What's the reason behind all the work and money right. you're spending to make a camera eye? Yeah, I think part of it is just like, you know, if you lose something, uh, it can be a gain. I'm a filmmaker, now it's actually an advantage. I'm glad I lost an eye. Because uh, this is like an incredibly innovative thing to do as, as a documentary filmmaker. What he is doing is building a lens inside this prosthetic eye that will then allow him to record anything he sees. What he's wearing around his head is what he's hoping will change his life. The camera inserted inside the right lens of these glasses is what Rob Spence plans on inserting into his eye socket. Behind him on the screen is what the eye camera will capture. Lift the glass up so we can see what your uh, sure. eyes look like. What's in your eye right now? Sure, it's just a, a false eye. It's a prosthetic eye. Usually a prosthetic eye is, is colored to match your own. And I actually have three. This is totally matching my other eye. I have another one that is actually the color of my old eye, which was a different color. Uh, and I also have just this plain white one that I wear sometimes just because you never look quite normal. And I'm just not normal. And sometimes it's better just to be accepted. So this is what you will be recording. Yeah. Which is pretty good quality based on what I'm watching there. Right? I think that, that uh, th there's definitely the technologies out there to achieve this level of, of quality. You see, Rob has been blind in his right eye since he was 12. That's when he had a tragic accident that caused him to lose his vision in one eye. I was a kid visiting my grandparents in Northern Ireland, and uh, I was messing around with a 12-gauge shotgun. I wasn't holding it properly. I tried to shoot a pile of cow crap. I hit the pile of cow crap, but I uh, also managed to cause a lot of trauma to my eye. How, how did that happen? I Sir? wasn't holding the gun correctly. <laughs> the shell popped out, I think. I'm not really sure. It happened pretty quick. Uh, 
the result was, though, I, I, I had a very uh, damaged eye. So they managed to save the eye, but after that I was legally blind, and as the years went by, uh, the eye deteriorated, and eventually I, I just had to have it out. It was an operation he talked doctors into letting him videotape for a documentary he's working on about the camera eye. The first thing they do is they, they cut out your eye, your old eye, uh, and then they put in a ball of sea coral. And what that ball of sea coral does is it allows your blood vessels and your muscles to grow into the sea coral, which is porous. And eventually, uh, the sea coral moves in stereo with your remaining healthy eye. Rob's disability never stopped him. In fact, even with his lack of vision, he became a master of the visual medium, producing acclaimed documentary films like Everyone Hates Toronto. But Rob says he kept staring at the lens of his camera. And one day, like a ton of bricks, it hit him. He could become a human camera himself and capture moments as a journalist we can only dream of. Of course, we're having a very natural conversation, but I'm not really being me and you're not really being you. We're being each other with a giant camera on a tripod <laughs> next to each other and we know we're being filmed. Right, right. So he searched the internet looking for the right person to create his camera eye. And he found the man he knew would do the job. Steve Mann, an electrical and computer engineering professor at the University of Toronto, an inventor. And just take one look at him and you'll know he's a genius. I'll let him explain the contraption around his head. This is an old prototype of, of electric eyeglasses that, that brings light that would have gone into the eye through a computer system and resynthesizes it or re-renders it redraws everything on your retina. And, and In case you didn't get light. that, what Professor so Mann has created kind of like, is a uh, computer you know, screen that basically on sits on his one eye and, and, and allows him to see and out of the other. And Steve and his team of scientists and engineers have donated their time to perfect the camera eye. But Steve's involvement goes beyond Rob's documentary work. He hopes his camera eye invention will be a medical breakthrough as well. Ultimately, I'm hoping that this technology will be able to help people see better and have some real really used to it as well. But the design of the camera eye has come with its challenges. There's not a lot of room in there. And uh, there's definitely the off-the-shelf technology. What we've done is come with a way to, to split the eye into two so we can create some room inside. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we're going to be doing that laser scan is so that we can play with how to manufacture the, just the prosthetic eye part so that we create enough room inside. And with people giving up so much of their privacy to technology these days, with computers and cameras just about everywhere, Rob realizes that his new camera eye may in fact be crossing that very fuzzy line. And he says although he's not part of the Big Brother phenomenon, he does admit to being a tamer sibling. And then there's little brothers, guys like me and, and Steve Mann who started this technology, but he also did it with a mind and an eye to surveillance. There's surveillance from on top and then there's surveillance from below. So for now, Rob Spence waits anxiously, documenting his journey to become the first ever ionic man. Everything does happen for a reason, so they say. God's will, you know, I'm Irish, so. <laughs> but I mean, uh, yeah, it's just you, it's like the glass is half full here, like this is, this is I would never have been able to do this crazy, amazing, big project with hyper-intelligent scientists right. and, and big companies and great and, reporters, uh, great reporters <laughs> if I hadn't lost my eye. Right. So it's a good thing. Next on 16 by 9. The backdrop to the Oscar-nominated movie Slumdog Millionaire is a scene inconceivable to most Canadians. But for millions of people here, the stark poverty shown in the movie is the cruel reality of everyday life. The heart still cries towards the betterment of the people here. If you have a story for 16 by 9, call our tip line.